Welcome to the No Name Brand Podcast. My name is Sashka Hanarapal, actress, singer, dancer, turned brand marketing sales and advertising strategist who brands your soul. And each week I bring you an inspiring person or message to help you discover your undergod. Turn up your leadership notches, challenge the status quo, because you're fast and furious with a powerful message to share with the world. Thank you for taking time out with me today. And without further ado, let's get our creative and wisdom juices for low wall. Love. So many different forms and shapes of it. Love for a dog, love for a partner, love for a child, or even love for a dream. And the intensity of love is the same, yet the feeling is different. When we love deeply, we learn to let go of a lot of energy that blocks us and we're able to heal ourselves. It's so simple and yet one of the hardest things to do, which is why I'm so pleased to have Caroline Palmy from Palmy Healing on the show today to talk about love and opening the doors for you to hear in a gentle and deeply healing way. Welcome, lovely Caroline. How are you? Thank you, Sashka, for having me here. I am fine. Have a good day. Thank you. (laughs) Brilliant. So I know for myself that when I first met you, I'm rather boisterous and energetic and all out there. And when I first met you, it was like hitting a wall of calm. You took everything, or you do, you take everything very calm, you consider what you're talking about, and there's no rush about anything. And I was like, oh my God. This is freaking amazing. Like I need to learn how to sometimes just just relax. I would love to know, were you always in the state of love and calm or did you go through a journey of learning to love yourself? Was there any heartache? Did you have any blocked energies? Would you mind sharing your journey with us? I am happy to share about my journey as I so love to inspire others and I hope my journey will help anyone out there. If it's just one person, then that is great. I'm very sensitive and I now know I'm an empath, so I take on other energy. And growing up as a child, of course, we started to please our parents. We wanted to fit in or heal our parents, make them happy, just doing whatever needs to be done so they're happy. At school, sometimes I had a hard time fitting in. Mm. because I think none really fits into a box but in society we try to and I tried really hard to fit in to have friends and be there and then later in my teenage years it got even worse because I think that's the age also where you really try because you're leaving sort of more your home and then you try to fit in and be liked I always wanted to be liked or be loved And then later, of course, I choose my relationships for, oh, this is great. I am loved. Wow, he likes me. Okay, great. He even loves how I look like. I always felt like sort of like the ugly duckling, but (laughs) I always, then I felt like a beautiful swan. And of course, I picked up relationships where I felt the partner needed healing. I could sense their pain, wanted to help them, but that feeling loved, like having someone in my life, this was so great. It was the first time sort of, wow, I am really lovable. Mm. And of course, it was all from an outside perspective. When my marriage broke apart eight years ago, I really had no idea who I was anymore. I started on a beautiful journey of reconnecting with myself because I was together for 20 years with that man and gave myself up completely. I woke up and I thought sort of, what music do I like? What furniture do I like? I was sitting in the living room and I said, furniture, that's not me. The books, this is not me. The rocks, this is not me. And I sat there and I said, but what's me? And I really sat there and felt, you know what? I have to go all the way back before the time I met my ex-husband and reconnect with those kind of things, sort of the music I like, the things I love to do. And a deeply healing journey started. Later on, I had another relationship and felt loved again. Wonderful. It's great. But when that broke apart, I felt sort of, 
I am, am I so unlovable? And I looked and I thought sort of, actually, I am looking in all the wrong places. Why can I only feel loved when I have a partner who shows me? I realized how needy I was for that love. So a beautiful journey, spiritual journey of self-love, connecting to the universe, the angels, and my true essence, our true essence, love began. I love that. And I mean, I mentioned before, there's so many different versions of love and the intensity is all the same, like that that strong, strong intensity, but the feeling is different. Like you're loving a dog is different to loving a partner or loving your child. And when we talk about, or when you talk about healing yourself through love, or do you start with working with yourself first or do you work on the relationship with, for example, your partner or your child first? I always start with myself first mm. because if I can't really truly love myself for who I am and embrace all of me, I can never do that with my children either right. or my dog or even a partner. Mm. How does one heal with love? Love is our true essence. You know, love is where we came from. Love is where we're going back to. And here on earth, we experience the duality. And all we are ever seeking is love to be back in that flow of love. And all our experiences, when you have a relationship break up or maybe some grief, and this is pain that gets stuck in our energy system. and. Of course, we then try to close down our heart because that keeps us from the pain. We don't want to feel the pain. It's sort of like a shield around the heart. Mm -hmm. But when we put those shields around like an armor for not feeling the pain, we can't really connect to the love either. Mm -hmm. So it's essential we really release that pain, heal that pain, open our hearts. So the love can flow freely through us and from us, of course. Mm. Oh, I'm all calm now. <laughs> there are so many books on love. And one of my personal favorites is The Five Languages of Love, which helped me or rather my husband and myself in our relationship when we were going through a rough patch. In rough patch, I say lightly. It was quite soul-destroying. And I wanted to know, do you have a favorite book or favorite books about love that you'd like to share with us that have helped you heal and find your way back to love? I think one book that stands out, a friend gave me after my marriage breakdown, and it's of course, Eat, Pray, Love. Oh, wow. And it's just, it was sort of so my story and my story was sort of finding myself again and loving myself for who I am. So this is a great book. Another really great book is from Louise Hay, Heal Your Heart. And there it was one of her affirmations that was really, really helping me was, I accept you or I accept you, Caroline. You can put your name with it and or I fully accept you. And that was sort of like, a weird new concept. <laughs> but actually, you have to accept all your parts and acceptance then grows into love. And if you can't accept one part, then you can't fully love yourself. When you read the book Eat, Pray, Love, which I also love that book, and I enjoyed the movie even more, it obviously didn't spur you on to, for some, they'll read the book and go, oh, I want to go travel. I want to experience life. I want to go, 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 go. And when you read the book, you return to love. That's pretty interesting. So you return to love for yourself. I really like that. That's how books really, when you read it, it's everyone gets a different take on it. Mm -hmm. And you always get the message you need at the moment. Mm -hmm. That was the message I needed eight years ago. If I sort of read the book now, I might get a different message from it. So it's, I, I love that, yes. Hmm. Speaking about books, you have an ebook, or you wrote it because it was quite challenging with your eldest son 
Yes. Um, as an indigo child, there are plenty of parents that struggle, not struggle, just don't have the tools to work with their children because often the problems are focused on. They're hyperactive, so give them some medication mm-hmm. and they don't see the indigo child in them or the empathic child in them or that they're earth angels as well and you know, that they're absorbing all this energy and discontentment from people around them and mirroring and they don't understand all of this. Can you tell us a little bit more about the ebook and what maybe highlight three points that really helped you with your son? My ebook is all about my story, mm. raising or my life with an indigo child. And in a way, he was my greatest or is my greatest teacher. And we came such a long way because he wasn't accepted in kindergarten. He was, the teacher couldn't handle him. And I felt, oh, it's his fault or my fault. I did something wrong. And why can't he fit in the box? Why can't he just behave? Why can't he just be normal? It's all those messages. Of course, that was back then when I was still married and everything, you know, when I was still thinking that way. And then just learning I think there was this one particular moment because he's a Capricorn and you and I, we both live in countries with the Alps and the Capricorns are all out there. It's great. <laughs> and I felt sort of, I wanted him to go on the paved road, <laughs> sort of the easy way. And I thought, so why do you have to always take the complicated way? And then I thought, so he's a Capricorn. Of course, he has to climb over steps and stones. And he's not built to go on the paved road. And that was sort of wow. okay. And for me also, I think I had that with all the children, sort of trying for them not to feel pain. It's sort of like, oh, I hope they won't make the same mistakes. Or when something happened at school, then I felt my own emotions and I learned to disconnect because I realized he wasn't feeling the same. He wasn't as sad not being part there of his friends. He was quite happy to be a loner and he's an introvert like me, so that's good. But then the greatest epiphany I had a couple of years ago when we were picking weeds in on the driveway and he complained and complained and complained. Why does he have to do it? It's so hot and this is so stupid and and and, and I thought sort of why can't you just do it? But I was like arguing, like it needs to be done because otherwise the stones will sort of fall apart. And then and, and, and I had all those lovely arguments and then he just kept going. And afterwards, I think a couple of hours or the next day, I sat there and said, so what was it? And then I realized I only wanted to pick the weeds to please my neighbors. So it looked nice. So I wasn't considered that being lazy or the lady with all the weeds on her driveway. And I felt sort of, wow, he's the truth detector. He realized I didn't want that to be done for myself. I wasn't, and he picked on, picked on, picked on for me to really see it. And all the arguments I brought, he realized they were not real. They was all made up. So those indigo children, and I realized that now whenever he was sort of a bit hyper, Mm -hmm. he was telling me, hey, mom, you are not standing in your own truth. And this was just like, wow. This is the greatest gift. And of course, throughout my marriage, he was always hyper. And the minute that marriage broke apart or a couple of weeks later, a friend said, your son has really changed. He looks so much calmer. And I thought, how can you tell that? His father just left us. He can't look calmer. (laughs) But he realized I was not in my truth and that marriage wasn't a truth or based on love or anything. And then once that tension around him was gone, he could relax more. So those indigo children, whenever they act up and they act up in school also, when the teachers or the surrounding, it's just not in their truth. And that's Mm -hmm. really amazing. It's the best gift. So whenever one of your children is acting up, 
have a look. They're only mirroring it back to you. Where is it you're not standing in your truth? Where is it you're doing something you not really want to or you don't feel, you feel obliged by outside things? Mm -hmm. Where is your truth? And whenever you're in your truth, in your center, in your heart, your indigo child is absolutely happy and pleased and calm. And it's also a form of loving yourself. It is. It is. Yeah, just acknowledging, I can so resonate with that because all three of my children are indigo children and they're all three empaths as well, mm -hmm. along with myself. And my eldest is also Capricorn, Caroline. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> and my husband, yes. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. And I know if I had to pinpoint one of the biggest lessons that my children have taught me as indigo children, probably wonder if I'm one as well, is the mirroring. How often the most important thing is how people and friends will mirror the insecurities that were mirrored onto them from their parents and bring it into the school and mirror it onto their friends. Mm -hmm. And by not teaching my children tools or giving them the tools to recognize, is that my insecurity or is that from the person mirroring it onto me, I'm able to choose, I can let it go, or if it's part of my purpose, I can help them. And in that moment, loving yourself enough to say and or to acknowledge and go, it's not my problem, but I still love you for this and making me aware of it. Kids, they're amazing. I never wanted children, but I could never not want them now. <laughs> All the lessons they teach us. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Caroline, why do you do what you do? What is it that spurs you on every single day? I love to inspire. I love to help others. I'm an earth angel. I love to help. I always wanted to become a doctor when I was a child, even late into my teens. Wow. And being now a healer, helping others, helping, easing their pain, releasing their pain, because I know it can block us from everything or when we are still holding us small or back or our heart is closed then we can't really enjoy the sunshine or the flower along the path because we're closing down and i always see myself or part of me and people around me and i just want to take them by the hand and go on a beautiful journey and this is what keeps me going and connecting heart to heart Recently, I had sort of a little, oh, I'm not successful because I just put success on how much money is coming in. And then I really went back and said, what does success mean? And I had lots of things that I really felt like successful. But the most important part was that heart to heart connection. This is success. Touching someone's heart, seeing their smile, their heart glow and start sparkling, their smiles, realizing how much lighter they feel and much more at ease mm -hmm. in their life. This is just amazing. This is just like, oh, I just so love it. It's like cuddling a child or it's like when your children take their first steps or when they enter, get into their university of their choice, or it's all those kind of moments. It's like a celebration. And I think it's a celebration of life and love. Yeah. And I'm feeling so in the flow whenever I do a healing session. It's just amazing. Yes. What do you think are, uh, how do you feel about myths around love? It's kind of been given a bit of a bad rap. Either love is I, your heart's been broken or love is all just for hippies, one love for all and peace for all. And I feel love's just been given a bad rap, that it's not seen. Love is then also associated with religion in Christianity, the rigidness of love and not the flow of love or the authenticity of love and that it's within each and every one of us. What are maybe one or two myths around love that you'd like to bust, that you'd like to put straight and go, nope, it's like this. It is a really good question. So I think one of the myths is you can love too much or when you love, you get hurt or something. And for me, it's when you're really in the flow of love and are just loving and you're loving yourself, then you can't get hurt by outside experiences because like when you meet someone and someone says, oh, you're so stupid or something and you feel like, oh, actually I'm not, I don't feel I'm stupid. So it doesn't really stick to you. But if you have something in you, a little belief that you're actually stupid, then of course 
that comment can hurt you because it triggers that part in you. But if you're really loving every cell of your body within and outside, it won't hurt you and you're in the flow. I think it's sort of like, I see it as you're in sort of, a, we are all in that pillar of pink light from the universe surrounding us, connecting to Mother Earth. And it's like, it's not like a protection, but it's your true essence and love. Love can heal anything. And I think Wayne Dyer said once, whatever is within you or in your heart that is not love, you have to get rid of it. Mm. I think I can't really think of other myths around love. So I hope that's a good answer. Yeah, but there is no right or wrong. It is loving. Sometimes you, like even with your children, like when I was pregnant with my first child and you get all advice from everyone around you and they go, you shouldn't have your child in your bed with you because you, they're going to get spoiled and it's going to love them too much. And I'd be like, okay, I won't do that. But then when you do bring them into your bed and then you're like, oh, this is just for both of us, just such a relief. There are moments when they do get used to it and you can break that habit it very quickly mm -hmm. in that moment you cannot love someone too much you mm -hmm. really cannot love someone too much and when my son or my kids hurt me with their words it's then exactly that exactly what you said if what they're saying triggers something in me it's an indication for me to go mm -mm, there's something you need to work on here Sashka <laughs> otherwise it wouldn't trigger you and it's like yes that's so true I love that so it's a really good myth that one can actually put into action as well just be consciously aware if someone's triggering something, oh, maybe that's something in me that needs healing, that needs a palmy healing. <laughs> And Wayne Dyer said it so well, and that was one of my, or is still one of my favorite quotes, is what someone else says is their karma. Mm. However, how you react to it is yours. And that's the same thing, you know, triggering or mirroring it back. So this is really, really great. Lovely goosebumps. Who inspires you daily and why? Wayne Dyer, I think I quoted him <laughs> enough. <laughs> yep. Um, Tamoriani mm -hmm. is another great, great woman that inspires me. Oprah Winfrey. Yes, or anyone, you know, that is really, sometimes I see a quote or a message or a picture and I feel, wow, this is just what I need today. Anyone that is sharing their love is a real inspiration. And so are you, Sashka, you share your love for branding. Yes, yes, and my vision and my purpose, yes, that is so true. What are your most loved tips to loving yourself one step and a day at a time? I hug myself. Oh, wow. You know, hugging are so nice and because I'm single. I mean, I love hug my kids, but sometimes you can hug yourselves. And the best thing is you hug yourself and then you realize you have one arm on top of the other. And then you turn around your arms and hug yourself. So you're hugging sort of the good sides and then you turn your arms around and also hug all the sides you haven't loved so much yet. That's a good thing. And every time I pass a mirror, I look at myself and I smile at myself. Mm -hmm. And another thing is looking into the mirror in the morning, you know, looking myself in the eye and telling myself, I love you, Caroline, or I wish you a great day, Caroline. And of course, if you're a bit of not feeling so comfortable by saying, I love you, Caroline, or your name, I mean, that's for your name, um, you can say, I accept you. I accept you fully, or I start loving yourself. So it's really great. And of course, I do another thing that helped me along with self-love is uh, Ho'oponopono. I don't know whether you heard about that Hawaiian healing technique. No. Oh, it's amazing. It's really an old Hawaiian healing technique. There was this one guy who did it. He went into a prison and he did that healing with all the papers on the people. He didn't see them in person and that prison was quite rioting, quite volatile, everything. And he did that for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and it calmed down and it was much more peaceful. So it's actually four sentences you use. You say the original thing is, I am sorry. But as you know, whatever you put after I am is how you feel. So I say, I apologize because I don't want to feel sorry. Mm. So the four sentences is, I apologize. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. 
And this is very simple. And again, forgiveness is not complete when you don't include yourself. Forgiveness often starts within. Forgive yourself for letting other people treat you a certain way. Forgive yourself for whatever happened in your life. Forgive yourself for being part of it. There is so much you can forgive yourself. So I stand in front of the mirror and I look myself in the eyes and I say, I apologize, please forgive me. I love you, Caroline. Again, I include my name. Thank you. And I do that a couple of times. And you don't even have to know what you are forgiving yourself for. It just happens. Whatever comes up is natural. So that's another very, very wonderful self love routine. Mm, I love that. I absolutely love that. I'm going to put that into practice. And also with my kids as well, I'm going to let them suggest it to them. I know my youngest daughter is always looking in the mirror and I'm always fascinated. I always look at her and I'm going, you're looking at yourself in the mirror and again, she goes, yes. Okay. It's great. Well, and I always say to her, well, you are beautiful to look at. And she's like, I know. <laughs> I hope she also smiles at herself. She does. She <laughs> great, does. Great. She's kissing the mirror. She's young. <laughs> Oh, she's adorable. She's showing you. She's showing us all. She can teach us so much. Oh, isn't that the truth, Caroline? She teaches me so much. My God, it's tiring sometimes. And oh, the irony it just dawned on me. She's our love brand. How funny is that? Wow. <laughs> she was born a month early and she had heart failure. And everything she does is built around loving, love. She's always drawing hearts on everything. She's always yeah. hugging you, ensuring that you're all right, making um, like, oh, just. I have goosebumps now. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Wow. That's a huge thing. Yeah, she's got a huge mission in front of her. And she does, she challenges me a lot daily. Daily, she challenges me. They all okay. do. They all do. <laughs> they all do. <laughs> I had to breathe there. Oh. So we're coming to the end, unfortunately. And what I like to ask all my guests at the end of the show to fill in the blanks on three of my core values and to give me your take on it. Creativity for you is? Oh, gosh. <laughs> fill in the blanks. I'm not so good at it. <laughs> Creativity for me means having time and just doing things. Creativity, yeah putting it into action. Wisdom for you is? Wisdom is connecting to the universe and connecting to my inner wise woman. Oh. Passion for you is? Passion for life. I regained that recently. So I have arrived here on earth with passion. Oh, I love that. How do you want to change the world or challenge the world doing what you do? I had a vision a couple of years ago when I was at the workshop in England and I brought Swiss chocolate. That's what you do. And then no. they said, oh, I love you so much. I thought, sort of, actually, I would love to be like Santa distributing love all around the world. Oh, wow. One heart at a time. Sort of, that's my uh, love vision. Oh, God, I love that. That is so cool. Caroline, thank you so much for being with us here today on the show. I thank really, so really appreciate much. it. Thank you so much for having me taking your time yeah it's just so nice just to calm things down and it doesn't need to be go 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 and just reminding we need to love just open the doors listen and loving in a gentle and deep way and healing yourself in that in in that respect as well mm -hmm. thank you so much you'll find out more about caroline in the show notes where you can find her her favorite book favorite quotes social media handles and just getting in contact when you feel the need that you too need to heal your heart and your love. Thank you so much, Caroline. Thank you, Sashka. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Dang, that was just super califragilistic expialidocious. I enjoyed having you on board and please do me and you a favor. Head on over to iTunes, SoundCloud or Stitcher. Click subscribe and a super bonus. Leave your review and you stand a chance of being announced and advertised on the show. I'm always striving to ensure that your brand is uplifted and empowered. Remember, done is better than perfect. So be sure to subscribe, leave a review and send in your feedback too. You're the absolute best. Keep rocking.